Welcome everybody to video three of Be an Innovator. Amp up your awesome admin superpowers by delivering innovation with Einstein Prediction Builder and Discovery. If you're joining us new, we are going step by step to build an AI powered app from start to finish in this six part video series. So go ahead and watch the video, share your progress online with the hashtag Be an Innovator, and you may be entered to win prizes. All right, so for video two, we talked about gathering requirements for this solution that we need to build for Cloudy's Candies. For video three, we're gonna learn more about how we can use and leverage Einstein to build truly intelligent, predictive apps for our company. And we are gonna start getting hands-on in our special Cloudy's Candies org. So remember, you can find a link to that in the trail mix. It's bit.ly slash be an innovator trail mix. All right, so for this video, we're going to be hearing from Leanne and Ayori. But we also have a special guest, VP of product management for Einstein, Marco Casalena, will be joining us and helping us understand how Prediction Builder can be another one of our amazing tools in our toolkit for admins to build awesome solutions for our company. All right, let's hear from them. Thanks, Rebecca. We're so excited to be back for our day three video where we can talk about how you as awesome admins can leverage AI in your app. So Iori and I have spent the last two videos with you going through Iori's Einstein use case worksheet where we better understood how to think about those business problems. We talked about our business requirements for those business problems that we're facing at Cloudy's Candies. And now today we're joined by VP of Einstein here at Salesforce, Marco. Marco, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you both for having me. So first let's talk about how we as admins should think about what are the tools that are available to us. As an admin, anytime we encounter a business problem, something that we want to solve for in our apps, in our orgs, we're thinking about that catalog of tools that we can use to solve, whether that's workflow rules or processes or page layouts, all the different ways that we can solution for these problems. And how should we, as admins, I already think about Einstein and where that fits in for us and the tools that we have access to. I'm glad you asked. So uh, we've heard a lot from our customers and folks out there, specifically 84% of business executives report that AI is a part of their strategic advantage and it's a competitive advantage out there, but only 34% of them actually have an AI strategy. And the reason why is because implementing AI is really hard. It requires teams of data scientists and just a lot of complex infrastructure. So what we've done with Einstein is we've basically opened the lid on AI and made it really easy and simple for any Salesforce admin to build AI powered apps with Einstein. So you don't have to have a PhD in order to build AI with Einstein. So admins should consider AI, should consider Einstein as one of the tools that's in their admin toolkit. Exactly. And so, and that's super exciting. I know for me as an admin, that's very exciting. I love knowing that Einstein was built really for admins and with how we use Salesforce. But as I'm adding this to my, my list of tools that I can solution with, what are some ways that I should think about AI as it's different from, say, building a process or building a formula field? Because a lot of these are the ways that I used to solve for problems. So how should I think of Kind of the function of AI a little bit differently from some of those tools I may have used in the past. Yeah, so in the past, if you've done something like lead scoring, you probably used a formula field or a workflow rule to automatically update and, and qualify a lead as high, low, or you know, um, medium qualification. Um, and that's because you want to have some sort of signal for your reps to know if this is a good leader or not. And uh, out of the box, you've probably been able to do that with the rules engine inside of Salesforce, where you can uh, say, hey, if these fields are populated, then this is a high quality lead. But if the phone number is missing or the address is missing, then it's a low quality lead, because it's gonna be pretty hard to follow up with that lead, right? Um, but the challenge with those rules is that they're manually maintained. 
And when your business changes, let's say for example, you have a new influx of data coming in from your websites, those rules are not gonna update automatically. Someone's gonna to have to go in and update them. Um, and it, they, you know, there's only so, you, for a formula field, it can only be so complex, right? You can only consider so much data. So you're also limited in the scope of what you can do with rules for that reason. But with AI, it's completely open because you can consider so much more variety of data in that process. And on top of that, it automatically relearns and ingests new data. So when your business process changes, the AI is gonna learn along with it and be able to give you a more accurate lead score. And so you can actually do lead scoring today out of the box with Sales Cloud Einstein. That's so exciting, right? Like thinking about, I think as an admin, that makes a lot of sense to me, thinking about those rules engines that we're used to working with, that we've worked with in the past, maybe like creating a formula field, creating a process, versus this AI engine that is going to have a lot of benefits over you know, using those kind of historic uh, static rules engines. What are some of, you know, for admins out there as we're thinking about what tool to use and what the benefits are of that tool? I feel like I understand what the difference is between it. What are some of the benefits uh, to really distill down for admins to using prediction? Well, unlike rules, uh, predictions have three main benefits. First of all, it will learn. And so that means, as I already just said, it will go through your data and find these correlations and learn what leads to things like lead conversion, what leads to churn, and other sorts of questions that you might ask. It will automatically relearn and adapt to changes as your business changes, as new data comes in, as new types of customers come in, it will automatically relearn and adapt to those changes and change its sort of internal rules accordingly. And finally, it will explain itself. So it'll tell you why it's making the predictions that it's making. Well, that's exciting. To me, I feel like you just said less maintenance. It can answer questions I didn't know I was going to ask, and it can help me better explain it to my executives. I mean, I feel like as an admin, that's things that are really beneficial um, and when I'm evaluating tools. So I understand if I'm thinking about the tools that are available to me, how I want to solve for attrition. So we've talked about the difference between a rules engine and AI. We've talked about some of the benefits to using Prediction Builder, but let's get into like the nitty gritty of it. What does it really mean to build a prediction? How am I going to start building a prediction for attrition? What does that look like? Well, let's start with what are the kinds of questions that you can answer with AI? Now you talked about attrition. Attrition is a type of a yes and no question. So one of the types of questions that you can answer with AI is, yes and no questions. And that can be yes or no, is this customer going to attrit or not? Or as in Aori's example, yes or no, is this lead going to convert or not? So there's all kinds of yes and no questions that you can answer. You can also answer numeric questions. You know, how many pieces of candy should I be stocking in my San Francisco store next week? Or how much money can I sell this big batch of candy for? Mm -hmm. uh, those are the kinds of numeric questions that you can answer. So now, to get to what questions should you ask, take a look at what you're focusing on in your dashboards and reports today. You know, if attrition is something that has been bothering you and your executive team, and that's something that you're commonly tracking in your dashboards and reports, chances are that's a good question to answer with AI. Because if you have a bunch of reports and dashboards on it already, you've probably already been amassing that data. And that's the data that Einstein needs to learn. Awesome. So thinking about, you know, what are those things you're trying to predict or trying to gauge those important KPIs, which also takes us back to the exercise we did on video one for, you know, the, the use case uh, worksheet where we're looking at those KPIs, looking at those dashboards, and then defining also what would that prediction look like. So is it going to be a yes or no? Or is it going to be, and just to clarify on that yes or no, it is reflected back on a percentage scale, right, how the prediction right. would be reflected So that. the response of an artificial intelligence system to a yes and no question comes in the form of a probability. Okay. And so you'll say, this customer has a 15% chance of attrition. So if we know that we want to predict for attrition, how do we start to prepare our data and prepare our org at Cloudy's Candies 
to create this prediction? What does that look like? Yeah, so it's all gonna start, you're gonna go back into your metadata, right? So um, think about well, how you define what attrition means for your business. In some cases, it may mean that a customer hasn't ordered any candies over the last 90 days. That might represent attrition. Um, but it could be a variety of other things as well. But ultimately what you need to do is combine that um, insight into a formula field. So you have a field on your object that, de that determines whether the customer has attrited or not. And that field is what you're going to predict. That's, that field is what you're going to feed to Einstein and then Einstein is going to build its prediction to predict when uh, that customer is going to attrit or not. So before we can build our prediction, we need to make sure that we have a field that is the same format of the prediction we're trying to build. So if we know we want to predict for a yes or no for our attrition, we want to make sure that we have a field that's a yes or no that on our existing data set of whether or not those past customers have attrited. Right, and that right. can be a formula field. So that could yeah. be a checkbox uh, typed formula field or it can be a straight up checkbox field. But any way you cut it, you have to be able to build a report historically, in the case of attrition, that says this customer attrited, this one did not. Awesome. And that's, that's an important clarification to make. So I think that can be a point as we're looking to build predictions and we want to prepare our data and prepare our orgs, that can be something that can be maybe a little bit confusing at first is how do I decide what I'm going to predict for and what field do I select. So we want to make sure that we're really readying our data. And we're going to do that actually right now for our Cloudy's Candies because as we're having this conversation, I realize my attrition that I've been tracking in Cloudy's Candies has been in the form of a date. So I can't use a date field in Cloudy's Candies. Right now we've got a, a field on the contact called uh, a tritted date, and we can't use that to build our prediction. We need to translate that into a checkbox field that says whether or not customers have a tritted. So we're gonna jump into our demo orgs right now, into our Cloudy's Candies orgs right now, and we're going to go ahead and create a custom field, and it's gonna be a formula field that's gonna return a checkbox and all we're going to say with this formula is if there's an attrition date it's going to check this box true that this customer has attrited now that we've created that field and all that data is going to be populated on our contact records in cloudy's candies we have that binary that yes no field that can be used to build our prediction next time well Thank you so much, Marco, for joining us. Thank you, Iori, for sharing all these insights about when we should use Einstein and how to think about it in our catalog of admin tools. And we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Back to you, Rebecca. Wow, that video definitely got me thinking. The opportunities for leveraging AI are endless. So just to summarize my main key takeaways, Number one, Einstein automatically learns and relearns to reflect changes in your business. How cool is that? This means you have less manual maintenance, you surface new insights, and you have the ability to explain why behind your predictions. Um, but to prepare, you have to take some steps. You have to identify which field to predict for and ensure it answers a yes or no or a numeric question. So. That's what we need to do next. It's your turn. Take today to build your formula field in your org. And make sure to add that checkbox field to your page layout so that we can see it. Take a screenshot and share it with us on Twitter using the hashtag be an innovator for a chance to win. Restrictions apply. See rules for details. And if you want to learn more about AI and Einstein, Check out the trail mix. We have a couple of badges in there, especially the AI basics badge that will give you some more insight. And join us for video four of Be an Innovator to learn how to build a prediction using Einstein Prediction Builder. See you next time.